So we're going to continue on in Unit 4. We've been talking about acids and bases and the different definitions, and we had talked previously about strong acids and strong bases and how they behave. Now we're going to discuss neutralization reactions in which an acid and a base actually react with each other. And so in a neutralization reaction, um, water and salt is produced. And when I say water, I just mean H2O, good old H2O, or sometimes you can see it written as HOH. It can actually be pretty helpful to write it as HOH to make balancing easier. Now, when I say salt, most of my students think of table salt, NaCl. But in this case, the definition means any ionic compound. And remember that an ionic compound is made up of a metal and a nonmetal, or any polyatomic ion. So when we have an acid react with a base, so here's your acid and here's your base, what happens is it's a double displacement reaction where the, kind of, if you think of this as a couple, like hydrogen and the um, anion are dancing with each other with each other and then the base is made up of M and OH and so this is another couple dancing so then they switch partners and so what happens is that H goes with OH so the cation goes with the anion and then M goes with A so your metal that was with your base so you end up with water and Ma and the salt. So you get ma water. <laughs> um, so this is a neutralization reaction. Now um, let's look at a case where we actually have an acid and a base instead of this example that I've used because it probably doesn't make that much sense and sometimes can confuse students more. So we have HCl reacting with KOH. So these are, this is a strong acid and this is a strong base. Um, I actually had a student tell me that their high school temp chemistry teacher would do a demonstration very similar to this. So they would combine equal amounts of HCl and I think the student said it was sodium hydroxide. In any case, it was a strong base. Strong base and strong acid. So their um, high school chemistry teacher would combine equal amounts of these two solutions. And then um, he would drink the product of this reaction. And you know, everybody was astonished. And he said, How can I drink this? Well, it turns out that what he was drinking was just water with a little salt in it. And in the instance, he would have. Instead of KCl, he would be drinking NaCl, which would just be like salt water. So, of course, my student said, why don't you do that for your students? And uh, I said, well, you know, it's a, you never know what the solutions are. Basically, I'm too chicken to do it. But anyways, it was an interesting, you know, application of neutralization because if you combine equal amounts of a strong acid and strong base, you should end up with just a just water and a salt. Now you wouldn't want to drink too much of that, but you know, not bad. So I have some reactions for you that I want you to predict the products of the reactions. And we're doing the same thing. You're just gonna pair up the cation with the anion in the other way. So and it doesn't matter what you write first. Like you could write NaNO3 first here and then HOH, or you could have HOH first and then NaNO3. Okay, now with this next one, we're going to combine sodium and phosphate and H and OH. Now this is a little trickier because the charge on phosphate is negative 3 and the charge on pota or, sorry, sodium is positive 1. So it, in order to write the formula, it's going to be Na3PO4. And then you'll end up with HOH. Don't worry about bringing this 3 over just yet. We'll take care of that balancing. 
So now we need to make sure that these are balanced, which I forgot to check if this one above is balanced. One sodium, one sodium, one hydroxide, one hydroxide, one hydrogen, one hydrogen, one nitrate, one nitrate. That one's good. Now this next one, one sodium, three sodiums, that's wrong. Uh, or not wrong, but not balanced. One hydroxide, one hydroxide, three hydrogens, one hydrogen, one phosphate, one phosphate. So if I put a three right here, I balance the hydrogens, and um, now I've put three in front of OH, so I need to balance my OHs. By putting a three here, that takes care of the sodiums. Okay, so this one was a little bit advanced for what you're going to see, but it's good to think about nonetheless. All right, so let's do aluminum hydroxide and nitric acid, HNO3. So you're going to get H and OH, aluminum, sorry, this is cut off, aluminum and nitrate. And this is going to be aluminum NO3 plus HOH. So I gave you a little help there, just like the above one. Um, okay, so this isn't balanced because I have three nitrates here. I need three nitrates there, then three hydrogens, and three hydroxides. Okay, so now that's balanced. Okay, for sulfuric acid reacting with calcium hydroxide, um, you're going to have sulfate and calcium go together, and that's a plus two, plus two. So plus two, or plus two, minus two. So I don't need to have any subscripts there. And then H and OH. To balance this one, I have two hydrogens over here. I only have one hydrogen over here, two hydroxides, only one. So I need to put a two in front of this. When I'm doing neutralization reactions, I really prefer to write water as HOH, and I balance it separately as H and OH as opposed to writing it H2O. It just makes it a little trickier to find out how to balance it. Okay, so let's go to a few simpler examples. These ones, these, these three in particular were a little tricky. So let's look at HCl and NaCl, NaOH. So you're gonna get H and OH, NaCl. Again, it doesn't matter the order that you write it in. One hydrogen, one hydrogen, one chlorine, one chlorine, one sodium, one sodium, one hydroxide, one hydroxide. Okay? It's all balanced. So HNO3 and KOH. We get KNO3 plus HOH. And then potassium, potassium, hydroxide, hydroxide, hydrogen. Hydrogen, nitrate, nitrate. It's all balanced. Okay, sulfuric acid plus sodium hydroxide. And I gave you a little hint with balancing this. That's more like what I would provide for you on the exam as opposed to these ones up here. So you're going to get sodium pairing up with sulfate. So sodium is plus one, sulfate is minus two. Cross drop. So you get Na2SO4 plus good old water, HOH, then I know I'm going to need two sodiums, two hydroxides, two hydrogens, so I'm going to need to put a two here, and now that's balanced. Okay, this next one I'm going to react HF with calcium hydroxide, so I'm going to get calcium fluoride and HOH, so HOH, and let's look at the formula of calcium fluoride Bring that down, so it's going to be CaF2. Okay, I have two hydrogens here, but only one hydrogen here, so I need to put a two. Two hydroxides, two hydroxides. Um, so now that's balanced. All right, this one doesn't have the coefficients, so you have to work a little harder. All right, carbonic acid and magnesium hydroxide, HOH, of course, good old water. Magnesium carbonate, that's going to be a plus 2 and a minus 2, so it's going to be MgCO3. I have two hydrogens here, one hydrogen here, so two, uh, two hydroxides, two hydroxides now. So it looks like we are all balanced on that one. And then the last one, um, you have phosphoric acid reacting with aluminum hydroxide, so you're going to get HOH. 
and aluminum. Let's look at the formula for that. It's plus 3, phosphate's negative 3, so, so it's just going to be 1 and 1, AlPO4. Three hydrogens, one hydrogen, I need to put a 3 there. Um, three hydroxides, three hydroxides, so it's all balanced. So with neutralization reactions, remember that you're always going to get water plus a salt. And when I say salt, it means any ionic compound, not just NaCl. Okay, so now um, we're going to talk about the pH scale. And, you know, we actually, it just in common usage when you're not talking about science, you hear advertising. So it's pH balanced. Um, it's alkaline water. It has a pH of above 7. Um, you know, pH is thrown around a lot. So we're going to learn the pH scale. Um, so water ionizes to a small extent. So what does that mean? Let's think about this. Water ionizes to a small extent. That means it produces charged species. Okay, so water, and I'm using one of these funny arrow, arrows, breaks down to produce this and this. And actually, I'm going to write this as H plus just to make it simpler. Okay, so at 25 degrees Celsius, which is room temperature in pure water, the concentration of the hydrogen ion is 10 to the negative 7th molar, that's a unit of concentration that expresses how many moles there are per liter. It's equal to the amount of hydroxide, so it's neutral, okay? So the ion product constant of water is the product of the hydrogen ion concentration and the hydroxide ion concentration. So that sentence just gives you this formula. Mm, sorry. So H plus times OH minus. These brackets mean concentration. And it's usually molarity. Okay. Um, KW is always constant. It's always 10 to the minus 14th. So, when you have an acidic solution, that means you have more H plus then OH minus. So if I have a solution that has a concentration of 10 to the negative fifth, I can figure out the hydroxide ion concentration because KW is always equal to H plus times OH minus. And see, right now I have the H plus and I know 10 to the negative 14th, so I can figure out what the hydroxide ion concentration is. So the hydroxide ion concentration, um, I'm just going to plug this value in here and divide it over here. So it's going to be 10 to the minus 14th divided by 10 to the minus 5th. So now I have two exponents and I want to divide them. So to divide powers of 10, what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract exponents. Okay, so 10 to the negative 14th minus, minus 5. That's like, so it's going to be really negative 14 plus 5 is going to give you 10 to the negative 9th. Basically, your hydrogen ion and your hydroxide ion, the exponents, need to add up to negative 14. Okay, so that will be the concentration in an acidic solution. when You have more H plus than hydroxide, so you have... Even though this is a smaller number than this, this is negative. So this is actually a higher concentration. So in a basic solution, you're going to have your hydroxide ion being greater than your hydrogen ion. So when you have the hydrogen ion at 10 to the negative 11th, which is actually really small, your hydroxide ion is going to be 10 to the whatever plus this gives you negative 14. So if you have 10 to the negative 3, you would get 11 plus negative 11 plus negative 3 gives you negative 14. Um, and if it's neutral, your H plus is going to equal your OH negative. 
Okay, so you end up with if you have a hydrogen ion of 10 to the negative 7, and your hydroxide ion would be 10 to the negative 7th as well. Um, to multiply powers of 10, you're going to add exponents. But the main thing to keep in mind is that hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion should always add up to 10 to the negative 14th. Okay. So the pH refers to the power of the hydrogen ion concentration. So um, sorry, I'm just making sure I have this. Okay. So pH is the power of hydrogen ion concentration. So what this means is it's the absolute value of the hydrogen ion exponent. So if you have a hydrogen ion of say 10 to the negative 3, the pH is going to be the absolute value of that. So you can never get a negative, it's going to be 3. So if you have an acidic solution, the pH is going to be less than 7, and the hydrogen ion concentration will be greater than the hydroxide ion concentration. The neutral solution, the pH is approximately 7, and the hydrogen ion concentration is equal to the hydroxide ion concentration. And with a basic solution, um, the pH is going to be greater than 7, and the hydroxide ion concentration is greater than the hydrogen ion concentration. So, which solution has a higher hydrogen ion concentration? One with a pH of 5 or one with a pH of 9? Which one has a higher hydroxide ion concentration? Okay, so let's look at our pH of 5. With a pH of 5, our hydrogen ion concentration is going to be 10 to the negative fifth. And our hydroxide ion concentration will be whatever needs to be added to 10 to the negative fifth to get to the negative 14th. So that would be negative 9. Okay, so which one has the higher hydroxide ion concentration? Okay, let's look at the next one, pH of 9, and we'll do the same thing. So the hydrogen ion is going to be 10 to the negative 9. Hydroxide ion is going to be 10 to the whatever gives you 10 to the negative 14th. So that would be 5. Okay, so which solution has the higher hydrogen ion concentration? This would have the higher hydrogen ion concentration. That makes sense. This is more acidic than a pH of 9. And the higher hydroxide ion concentration between these two going to be here. And that makes sense because the pH is more basic. Okay. So that concludes our lectures, or that lecture um, for today. Um, we will continue on talking about different applications of pH and, and acids and bases and what it means. So do your practice problems on um, these few pages. Look over your notes, and I will see you next time for more Unit 4.